Hi everybody, I'm Dan Wells, and I write horror, science fiction, fantasy, and I talk about games on the internet. Today I'm talking about one that is all three of those things, horror, science fiction, fantasy. It's called The Black Void. This is another one of the Scandinavian RPGs. They have such a huge boom of those right now, and they're so cool coming out of Sweden and Denmark. This one's Denmark, uh, and it's... Uh, Distributed in the U.S. by Modifius, and I guess distributed in English by Modifius. I guess they do uh, outside of the U.S. as well. Anyway, it's uh, it's a really interesting game system uh, and a really compelling world, and I want to talk about it a little bit. The biggest strength of Black Void is the art. So as we go through, when I keep saying, "Look at this awesome art," that's look at the awesome art. Anyway, uh, so Black Void is. The, the basic premise of it is that ancient humans from way back in the day, you know, thousands of years ago, were kidnapped, abducted by aliens, and taken off and uh, have been living, you know, for the last few millennia in as weird, scattered refugees in this oppressive alien empire. And the alien empire, as presented, is very kind of... Near Eastern influence. Uh, a lot of the art and a lot of the clothing gives you kind of a an you know, ancient Persian or Sumerian or uh, Indian kind of vibe. Um, anyway, it's cool, and so it's like almost a Cthuloid kind of feel to it. There are no actual Cthulhu monsters. This is not part of the mythos, but the idea that space is vast and unknowable and humans are insignificant in it is kind of the core theme of the game. And so the humans, every player is a human. There are tons of alien species, but the players are all human. Uh, some of them might be slightly different human uh, with some different capabilities or some altered biology, but uh, they're all human and they are kind of trying to stay alive, trying to stick together, carve out some space for themselves, and always with this distant hope in the back of their minds that Earth, this ancient, you know, legendary place that their myths tell them they come from, might still be out there and might still be reachable. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool idea, and I like it a lot. Uh, I do want to say up front that, uh, as is common with a lot of these Scandinavian role-playing games, there is a trigger warning for this one. Uh, some concepts that maybe are not a big deal in Denmark, but could potentially be very triggering or offensive to American players, uh, such as you know one of the core role-playing options, like background options, is slave, which tends to always, you know. Be, it, be a difficult concept for a lot of people here in the U.S. Um, one of the core three, there's three human kind of archetypes. There's human, just normal human. There's void marked, which means that the void has in some way altered you. And then there is half-blood. And even the word half-blood can be very triggering for some people. And uh, so also one of the core magic systems, there's two or three, uh, one of them is is bloodletting and blood sacrifice and so if those kinds of things bother you this is a very dark game and it has all of that stuff in it so you know proceed with caution if that bothers you don't play it play something else there's a million role-playing games out there um, if something that is super dark and says the word half-blood and has you kill animals to get magical effects through sacrificial rituals if that doesn't bother you then read on. We're going to talk about Black Void. So let's get into it and look at this a little bit. Here we go. Um, so, the uh, first of all, you can see the uh, production values look very self-pubbed, but uh, at the end of the day, I think, it, I mean, it's still a very pretty book, and like I said, the art in it is phenomenal. So uh, you can see what I mean about this kind of Near Eastern, Persian kind of vibe to the art. 
And so even the alien planets, these are aliens who travel through magic and through portals and that sort of thing rather than spaceships. And so there's a little bit of tech, but mostly it is all, you know, a, a fantasy system with, you know, these kind of Middle Eastern bazaars in outer space populated by crazy looking aliens and stuff. Um, let's look at the uh, character sheet and explain a little bit about how the game works. And so you've got these core eight traits. Um, and the traits are, you know, for a starting character anywhere from one to five, three being the human average. And character creation is done with a point by system. I'm a big fan of point by systems. They tend to be very complicated. And so, you know, it's not as simple as uh, a random roll or something like D&D &D where you just pick a race and a class and you plug in some attributes and you're done. Point by can take a lot more time to put a character together, but it can give you a lot of really intriguing options. And so it has flaws, you know, advantages, disadvantages. It has powers you can bring in. It has all kinds of background options you can buy. Um, and one of the things I like about that is that the way they are balanced, for example, if you are uh, trying to buy yourself a better background, so like you want to improve your social standing, it actually costs six points to become the highest social standing that a human can achieve in this society, which is like that of an artisan. Able to travel more or less freely, people respect you when they see you. It costs six points. If you want to be able to fly at will, that only costs five. So, uh, you, you, first of all, that, that implies that the social system matters, which it does, and that uh, you know, the role of humans in this civilization is a key part of the storytelling. But also, I love those kinds of trade-offs when you're dealing, you're trying to decide with, you know, should I raise my traits? Should I give myself some extra talents, some powers? The background can be every bit as important uh, in a really rich developed setting like this one has. So the uh, traits and the flaws, the talents and the flaws, the traits are the attributes, intellect, agility, all that kind of stuff. Um, attributes are something entirely different. I, I, the, the, the wording that they're used, this is, a, this is a thing that comes up in a lot of Scandinavian games. Um, these are called traits. And uh, they are different from what we typically think of as attributes. Anyway, the talents and the flaws, which are the advantages and the disadvantages, are all keyed directly to your traits. So, um, you know, if you are really bad at, let's say, persuasion, then you can get flaws in persuasion that make you even worse at it, but give you bonus points that you can use to then buy higher attributes or extra powers or something somewhere else. And then, you know, your talents, if you have at least three points, let's say, for every three points you have in a, in a trait, you can buy a talent for it. All of the talents and flaws are keyed to these. So if your persuasion is at least three, then you can buy a cool talent that makes you better at it. And if you get up to six, which you can't do at character creation, but you could later on through character advancement, then you could buy a second talent and be even better at persuasion. And the talents are little, you know, neat little things that, uh, you know, improve your abilities in ways other than just numerical value. So they're kind of cool. Um, the actual attributes, what's called attributes, are uh, things like alien powers and stuff. If you want to have wings or extra arms, you know, because at some point your family tree interbred with an alien or, or was mutated by something, that's what the attributes are. And powers are things like magic, uh, which can come through mysticism or the blood rites, uh, things like that. So uh, let's take a look and so okay well anyway we've, we've looked at this there's the attributes there's skills there's all these kinds of things uh, the way the game works is you use d12s and uh, you roll a d12 and you will add your trait if you know or your trait bonus which is what you would mark up in here let's take a look at the trait bonuses these are all pretty normal things boom so we have traits 
So you have your trait score. So a three right here is the average scale of humans, and it gives you a zero modifier to your roll. If you buy five, which is the biggest you can buy at character creation, that's going to give you a plus two to your roll, and you are that is the agility of a Dakri temple dancer, which means nothing to you, but once you read the book, it might. Um, so you know you roll a d12, you add that modifier, and if you've got a skill that applies, you get to add that too, and then you know if you beat the target number, then hooray, you succeeded. Uh, very simple, very d20ish in that sense, although it uses a 12 instead, which changes the curve and everything. Uh, a, a natural 12, if you roll that, is a success, is a critical success, and they've got, you know, little tables that you can roll on for things like that. Uh, one of the things that I really love about this is, um, let's look at the sanity. There's so many other things, so many ways to hurt people other than damage. Uh, I compared this to kind of a Cthulhu-esque game at the beginning. And you can see that here because there are, uh, the, you know, there's an entire system of, where is it? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong section. Let's go down here to, here we go. Okay, so there is an entire table of awe. If you want to overawe somebody, there is an entire table of delirium, of fear effects, and then of course of sanity and madness effects. So uh, these are all, you know, cool ways of showing that yes there's damage and you can kill people but it's also just as possible to be driven insane uh, to be so awed by a powerful void entity that you end up worshiping it like there's a lot of different kinds of damage and different kinds of negative effects that you know in many cases are, are worse than death and I love that that's baked right into the core system of the game anyway Let's look at, just as like a last thing, I do want to show off some of the art. And I think the best way to do that is to show some of these other uh, alien species that we see throughout here. So one of the things I love about these, as I click through them, you'll see, with maybe one exception, there isn't a pretty alien race. You know, that's something that we see in almost every science fiction game. Here's the space version of elves. They're, you know, tall and thin and hairless and, you know, have beautiful features. Features that we as humans would consider beautiful. None of that nonsense for this game. Uh, these are all alien, unknowable things. Um, they are very different from us. Their core beliefs, the things that make them who they are, the things that they want from the world are inherently alien and the game leans into that. So these are not just Star Trek aliens that are so much like us, we could literally breed with them. Although, like I said, that there, there are some alien traits that have sneaked into some human um, bloodlines in the past. But, uh, you know, these are aliens that, that are really alien. They think like aliens. They have different values. They have different thought processes. The things that they want out of life are sometimes so foreign to us that we can't understand them, which is kind of what the game's about. So, anyway, um, Black Void is a really great game. Uh, I it, it is very standard in a lot of ways. The actual gameplay feels like a D20 game. Uh, but the options that it presents, uh, the kinds of characters you're able to create, you know, giving yourself weird alien powers, being touched by the void, they add so much flavor to that. And then the uh, story setting itself is so different. And uh, it just, it's a nice combination of simplistic game system with crazy rich detailed alien world and blends the two really well together so anyway that's black void um i hope you get a chance to check it out sometime you could look it up uh online check it out on uh, amazon or drive through rpg or something like that or just look at uh you know blackvoidgames.com something like that 
Anyway, that is their game system, and I think you might like it if what I have described sounds fun to you. So, check it out. I'm Dan Wells, and you are awesome.